We now present a conversation with Mr. Jagdish Oberoi, former director of the Sri Satya Sai Airport at Puttaparthi. In conversation with him is Professor J. Venkat Raman. I think I should tell you about that incident also. Mm-hmm. Go uh, ahead. Both Pranath Angrish and myself in Indian Airlines, we had been fond of smoking and other things in life before we came under the influence of Swami. But I had given up by then. And on that incident, mm-hmm. when I moved into Pranath's room, he was very fond of his morning cup of tea. Mm-hmm. So we both used to, before going for darshan, we used to walk out and go outside in the street and drink a cup of tea each. And then he would shove into my mouth one five 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 cigarette and into his mouth also. And we used to have a quick puff, <laughs> wash our mouth, throw it away and come back. One day while we were walking back, mm. Swami was standing in the veranda of the mandir. You know, Swami used yes, to yes, live on top no. of the mandir. He was standing in the balcony. Mm. And suddenly uh, we both looked up and we saw him. Mm. I did namaskar and stood there. Mm. And then some sevadal came running. Mm. You are Mr. Angrish? He says, Swami wants you. Angrish started sweating. Mm. He said, Swami has known about our misdeeds. <laughs> he called him and he was gesticulating and telling him something. Blah, blah, blah. So then Angrish comes down. Mm. He says, come, come, come. So we went to the room. He picked up the carton of cigarettes, just broke everything, threw it into the dustbin. He says, no more smoking from tomorrow. I said, very good. I told you not to do it. But why did you do it? He says, Swami told me. He says, not only are you corrupting yourself, that you're corrupting your friend who has given up smoking and you may force him to smoke because it's not good for him. I have influenced him to give up smoking and you are now corrupting him. So these are the things which emboldened me to say that Swami had completely taken full charge of my life right from the day, maybe even earlier. But at least I am aware of the fact that right from 27th of March, 1972, he had chosen to take charge of my life. Okay. I now want to come to a later period. At some point, you started working in the South, didn't you? Uh, that's right. I, because I remember you were telling me you were posted in Madras. That's right. Mm-hmm. I was posted by Indian Airlines mm-hmm. as general manager, commercial. Those days, we used to call them chief commercial managers of the southern region mm-hmm. based in Madras. Mm-hmm. And uh, my charge of activities was the total southern region of Indian Airlines for sales and marketing and management of the 13 stations. Of that Indian included Air. Hyderabad, Bangalore and Hyderabad, so on. Bangalore and Sri Lanka, Sri Mal- Lanka. Maldives. Oh, also. I had quite a wide beat here. Mm. And uh, I came there in 1980, I was posted there. Mm-hmm. And I was very anti this. That is three years before your retirement. Three years before my... So that is why I was very anti this posting because three years before my retirement, generally it's considered necessary to post you close to your hometown Mm -hmm. for your settlement. And here my friend, the chairman, Mm. who also Swami has been protecting me from this particular person, didn't Mm. like me. He decided to transfer me to South. He was doing you a favor, he's keeping you near Swami. Well, that's what I found out later on. But at that time, I felt that uh, my retirement plans would be upset. So my refuge only used to be Swami. No other godfathers in Indian Airlines. Because I was one of those guys which had the top button open all the time. Mm -hmm. And in Indian Airlines, I said that I work for Indian Airlines and not for you. So I, I used to be very open with my opinions. So I prayed to Swami, I sent him telegrams, I sent him various communication Mm -hmm. to have this transfer cancelled. But nothing happened. So, I think 2nd August 1980, I handed over charge in Delhi and came and took charge from Pranath Angrish in South. He (laughs) was there. He was sent to the North and I came down South. And uh, I had gone on tour And when I returned from tour, I went into the station manager's room, airport manager's room, who had come to the aircraft to receive me. I saw him unlock his door with his Mm. own key Mm. and walk into the office. But I noticed from the corner of the table, Mm. 
a small chit mm. with folded chit with my name scrawled on it, Oberoi. Mm. So I picked it up. I read it. I am coming day after tomorrow. Meet me in Sundaram. Baba. In Indian Airlines office? Indian Airlines office. Uh, where was it located? At the Madras airport. Airport? airport. Oh my God. So I, I just kept that note in my pocket. I didn't want to make a noise about it. And I asked Subramanim, who's the airport manager. Mm. I said, Subhu, who, who, uh, who left this note here? He said, sir, when I went, I left this office. There was no note here. And I had locked this office because I, the confidential papers here, I never leave this office unlocked. Mm. No one can enter this office without <laughs> okay. me. So anyway, I went to my office. Boy, I, you are lucky. You are having one. <laughs> so I called my secretary. String and of I, wonderful experiences. I called my secretary. I said, will you ring up uh, who is the state president? In? I didn't know I was two days, only two or three days in Madras. Mm. I said, uh, ring up the state president of Tamil Nadu, mm. Sai Samiti. And I would like to speak to him. He says, sir, it's one General Mahadevan. My secretary also was a devotee. Mm -hmm. So I said, put me on to him. So I said, General, my name is Oberoi. Mm. I've taken over from Pranath Angrish. Oh, you yes, yes, he was telling me when Obra is coming. Nice to meet you and all that. I said, well, that later. Mm. But is Swami coming here day after tomorrow? He says, no, we have no information. I said, then you better get ready. He is coming day after tomorrow. <laughs> he said, how do you know? I said, well, something tells me. I didn't want to tell him about all this. Literally. So, three minutes later, reading, look, who told you Swami is coming? We just got the telephone from Kutumrao that Swami is driving down to Madras on his way to Bombay, but he'll spend some time because Sundaram tem Temple was under construction. Mm -hmm. So Swami used to pay a lot of visits, mm -hmm. uh, sudden visits like this mm -hmm. to Madras to supervise the construction of uh, Sundaram Temple. So uh, he said, but who told you? I said, General, when we meet, we'll talk about it. But it is true he is coming. He says, yes, 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 yes. We have a special place for you. So okay. Swami came. Mm. We were all standing. The local samiti, the special place they gave me, mm. was close to the gate. And <laughs> I stood there near the gate. I'm a new man there. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows me. Swami came in his car. Mm. Big reception. All the wise guys mm. of the Madras samiti. They deboarded him from the car, garlanded him, and marched in procession towards the veranda mm -hmm. of the Sundram temple. Mm. So he went there. He looked at me from there. He came back leaving all these people, mm. put both his hands on my shoulder. So you have come. Why did you not want this transfer? <laughs> I said, Swami, I explained to you I've got to retire in three years. So what? You can still retire from here. I will retire you. <laughs> but it is in your own interest that I have brought you here. Your friend, the chairman, the old chairman has come back. And he is going to make your life miserable. So I have forced his hand to transfer you away from him. And in Madras, you will be very happy because you have a stronger boss here. You have a big umbrella over your head. Spend the last three years of your life, working life, in happiness in Madras. My blessings with you. This is how it happened. So I came to Madras and I spent most eventful period of my career in down south here. I now want you to tell us something about that uh, incident when you had a serious medical problem and uh, Swami saved you from yes. disaster. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I don't know where you want to begin, but begin where you think you should begin. I think it is always better to begin at the beginning. Sure. So in while I was in Madras, Somewhere in the middle of 1982, I think around August 82 or so it was, mm -hmm. I developed an uncontrollable cough and slight pain when I used to sing bhajans or talk too much. I used to feel a terrific pain and choking in the throat. Mm -hmm. So I went to Indian Airlines doctor. Indian Airlines incidentally has a very good medical scheme even now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we get the best. So he said, I, I think this is much more than a sore throat. Mm. 
so he recommended me and sent me to a specialist called Dr. Ram Lingam, mm-hmm. who was one of the better known ENT specialists in Madras. So Ram Lingam had a look at my throat. He says, there is nothing wrong with your throat. Blood mm-hmm. tests were done, nothing wrong with the blood. He said, it's much deeper. It's into your voice box. So tomorrow you come at an empty stomach. I'll dilate your system and I'll probe into the voice box and we'll see what's wrong. So he looked, he saw, he didn't like what he saw. So he took some scrapings. He says, I'm sending this for biopsy. And tomorrow we'll tell you. I don't want to scare you, but I think you should be a little concerned about what is wrong. Were you concerned? Not much. Frankly, no. Did you have any uh, inkling of what the diagnosis yeah, could I mean, be? He was, he was quite obvious. He didn't name the disease, but mm. I knew what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. So, But I said, uh, doctor, all right, we'll leave it to, till your biopsy report. By that time, I had developed so much faith and confidence in Swami that if it has to happen, he will let it happen. If it doesn't have to happen, he won't let it happen. So this faith was there and th- this gave me the courage not to be bothered about these small things. And next day, he declared the verdict. The report was malignant, first grade cancer, not invasive at the moment. The analysis said not invasive at the moment. It could become invasive if not controlled. So he gave me various ways. The treatment we will decide later. But now we have to consult an oncologist and all that. But my Lord wouldn't leave a man whom he converted into singing bhajans to die of throat cancer. So unannounced, I got another message from Jogarao as usual. Swami is flying from Bangalore to Hyderabad Mm -hmm. on so-and-so date. Mm. Can you be there in Bangalore? He wants to meet you. So I flew down to Bangalore because whole of South was Indian Airlines mine. I could step into an aeroplane and go anywhere I like. So I arrived in Bangalore the previous evening, the date that Swami was to fly. So at Whitefield, he talked to me. He said, oh, you have come. Tomorrow morning I'm flying to Hyderabad. Come in the plane with me. I said, Swami, I'm always on the plane. Even if you had not called me here, when I know about your flight, I would have come and joined that flight here. I always fly on that plane. So next morning I was on the plane. So Swami used to sit in a seat 8A. I remember every day. That was his particular seat. And in 8B used to be the late Radha Krishna. 8? Not 1? No. Uh, he did not want to travel in the J class. I see. He wanted to travel in the economy class. That's right. So 8 was the first row of the economy class. Mm, that I know. Huh. So that is why he used to have the seat 8A and next to him Radha Krishna and then his entourage around him. So he uh, sent the hostess. He says, one of your managers, Rubra, is somewhere on this aircraft. Bring him. So she brought me. He made me sit next to him. I felt very awkward sitting at the same level with him. I mean, after all, if you believe in him and accept him as God Almighty, at first time it's rather awkward to sit at the same level with him, sitting next door like this in the seat. <laughs> Sometimes he compels us to do such so things. So he, he said so, na? I will not eat you. I will not eat you up. Sit down. So I sat down. Seat belt sign was on. I didn't put on the seat belt. So he, like the grandmother, he put the seat belt on me. Now tell me. Abhi, tum bilkul bolta nahi, gata nahi, chup chap rehta hai. Why? So I said, Swami is antaryami. Swami knows what is wrong with me. I'm not supposed to sing. I'm not supposed to talk. That's why I'm peaceful and quiet. What is... Tumara bimari kya hai? What is wrong with you? I again said, Swami knows it. I know, I know everything. But if you will talk, you will take the load off your chest. Tell me in your own words. So then I told him the diagnosis of Dr. Ramblingham. So he looked straight into my eyes. I will not allow this. Those were the first words which raised my hopes. He called the hostess. So I pressed the bell. She came. He asked for a glass of water and a spoon. She brought it. 
he materialized a powder which was slightly darkish than the normal vibhuti and the whole thing poured out of his fingers into the glass. He stirred it with a spoon and he made me drink it. It was utterly bitter but I drank it all and then he, whatever was left on his finger, he kept on rubbing my throat and it was so soothing. The cough almost disappeared. The pain was Were you not. coughing all along? Well, I mean, it chose to be like this as I'm talking. <coughs> like mm. this, it chose to come. After that, it didn't happen. And that pain, that nagging, choking pain had gone. Mm. How do you feel? Is it better, Swami? Much better. It's almost, the cough is almost gone. And the pain is also much less. Acha, when you go back, he was speaking in English and Hindi both. Abhi tum madras jata hai? Mm. Okay, yes, Swami, after you get off, uh, I, after two hours, I have a flight back to Madras from Hyderabad. I'll take that straight. I will not go to Bangalore. So, Madras, mein, there is another doctor called Kameshwar. Take an appointment, us a second opinion low. When you Swami, why take a second opinion? Because I feel that Swami has already cured me of this scourge. And it is not there anymore in my system. Obey your Swami. You take your second opinion. Go to Dr. Kameswar. So I said, all right, Swami, I'll do it. So I went and took an appointment with Dr. Kameswar. When I went there, I showed him Ramlingam's report, which was only about a week old. And he said, but why do you want me to bother with your throat again? In one week, Ramlingam's report is positive. It is based on a biolog biological analysis. So it cannot be wrong. And there is nothing much in these diseases one can do in one week's time. So I'll only be bothering you for dilating your throat and examining again. I said, no doctor, I believe I'm cured and I want a second confirmation and opinion as I've been told to get it. You didn't tell him anything about Swami? No, not at that time. Mm -hmm. So he said, all right, if you insist. So, you know, when he was looking through mm. his instrument, mm. I saw his eyes open wide. Mm -hmm. Now, this could mean only two things. Mm. Either it's much worse than he expected or it's not there at all. Mm -hmm. So, when he pulled it out, he says, you go home. There is nothing there. I, either I'm blind or Ramlingam is blind because in our medical science, there is no possibility mm. that the cancer, even of the first grade and non-invasive, can disappear in one week's time. But I can't see anything. Your vocal cords are absolutely normal. And... If I would give flight to my fancy, mm -hmm. I feel that your vocal cords have been replaced and they're absolutely of a much younger age than you. <laughs> Obviously, it appears that when Swami was doing this, mm. he was manipulating something. But later on, I discovered there were two reasons why I was sent to Kameshwar. Mm -hmm. One was for my own conviction. Mm -hmm. And second was for his conviction, because he was on the outer periphery to believe or not to believe, <laughs> to believe or not to believe. So and he was when, using it as a bait to yes. get him in. So the moment he heard about this, he fell flat on his face at the lotus feet and accepted him mm. as what he had been playing with to accept or not to accept. So this is how today I have still a two and a half octave voice. In fact, I wanted to sing in the mandir. Mm -hmm. But Swami said, no, here your work is different. Mm -hmm. You do your airport. <laughs> let, let the singing be done by the youngsters here. Mm -hmm. But I can still sing. Mm -hmm. I sing an odd bhajan or two.